Um, does anybody have the agenda in front of them, either Jenny or Alex? I can pull it up in just a moment. Yeah, we just need one of you. Well, I'll read the statement because you don't guys don't have a chair at, at the moment. So that's the other thing we have to figure out today. Oh, wow. That just. Actually, I'm not sure if I do. I have an email from you saying there's not a lot on the agenda, but. I Did I not attach the agenda? I, I have, there's an email from uh, January 11th. I believe that has the agenda. All right, let me find that, sorry. But I can oh, go ahead is. and yeah, read the statement just because you guys don't have a formal chair yet. Sure. So, although, so with the extension of chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every, sorry, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So on the agenda for the review, there's opening remarks, announcements, introductions, and agenda review, public comment, trustees reports, election of a chair or co-chairs, building reservations, building maintenance, building updates, and then the next meeting date to be determined and other topics the chair did not reasonably anticipate 48 hours in advance of the meeting. So pretty standard. Um, I think we can do some introductories because Jenny, um, I'm not sure if you know Susan and Alex, so Jenny is our new member, who's the third member. Um, and this is Susan and Alex. And I believe all three of you live in proximate proximity to the Munson as well. Am I correct on that? Correct. Yeah. Great. I unfortunately moved from West Street. So now I'm in the downtown area. So I'm very far from Munson, which <laughs> this weekend we had a little incident so I had to like get up and go over there and give someone a key. So I can talk a little bit more about that during the reservations portion. So we did the agenda review, opening remarks, and we can open up for public comment. And I see that we have one attendee in the public comment. So Maria, yes, she's already on it. She's raised her hand and I'm going to go ahead and let her into the meeting. Good morning, Maria. Good morning. Hello, everybody. It's uh, nice to meet all of you. So my name is Maria. I also live in South Amherst. Um, and uh, I love the Munson. We used it a ton. My kids loved it. That We've been to performances there in the that are held in the hall. Um, and uh, I have been, the reason I'm here today is that I have been following the proposed improvements to the HVAC system and the thermal envelope um, that have been going on a very long time. I had the pleasure of voting in favor of it back in town meeting and uh, it's kind of stalled out, it seems. Um, I understand that there have been some uh, additions made and some, uh, some further study, but it's been a really long time and I think that, I think it's a really important project for the town to get done. Um, on the scale of, you know, investment in this, it is it is not a lot of money and the money's been there. And I know that there's been money set aside in for uh, previously, way before I um, got onto town meeting uh, for improvements to the Munson. I hear that the, uh, the handicap accessible ramp has been put in or is being put in, so that's great. But I'm, I'm hoping that you guys can really get the ball going forward on these HVAC changes and get us off fossil fuels and get us onto heat pumps and get a better thermal envelope. The building deserves it. It's a great asset to the town. So um, thank you. Thank you guys for serving on the, on the trustees. Thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for the uh, comments. 
Thank you for saying something. It's so nice when <laughs> committee members talk back. It's 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 great. Um, that doesn't normally happen. So oh. yeah, th thank you for the humanity. <laughs> well, I mean, right. it's nice there... neighbors as well. So you know, even though we haven't met in person, so right. thanks for joining us. We're al we're allowed to talk to them, right? Well, so usually during the public comment, you don't necessarily respond. So like to the direct thing because our we need to be following the agenda so if right. someone brings something up that's not on the agenda it's hard to speak to and then you can also speak during that portion of the agenda if the item is on the agenda but saying thank you for coming and thank you for you know saying what you said is not an issue okay it's actually very nice I, you know. okay first one of these yeah um. so um, next on the agenda is the election of a chair or co-chair. So I, first of all, Susan can't vote, but there's three of us. So if she's in agreement with it, I think you can still do that. Um, I'm always like, this is a three person. So I co-chairs might not be the best way to go, but, um, I think you guys do need to somehow elect a chair. And two of you make a quorum, so we can do that now. Uh, Alex? <laughs> I, you know, I, may I ask a question of Jennifer? Um, yeah. How has the election of a chair um, happened in the past? You know, because I'm not familiar with the-, the Just the like this. So Jenny might say, or Susan might say, hey, Alex, you're a returning trustee. I think you should be it. And then Alex, you might say, hey, Susan, but you're also a returning trustee. I think you should do it. And then Susan might say, but I'm not, a, I haven't been sworn in yet, so I can't be chair. So however you guys, and you know, it's just that simple. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I would love to see Susan as chair if, if she would so... <laughs> choose to be chair after being sworn in, we could vote her in as chair. Um, I'm a big firm believer in seniority and familiarity with the area. And, 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 and Susan's been uh, a community member longer than I have um, and familiar with the area. So that would be my reasoning. I was what are the... oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was going to suggest Alex. I know I can't vote, but Um, what are the, are there additional responsibilities for a chair? I mean, we all so, have to attend the meetings because there's only three of us. Right. I mean, assuming that that's possible, sometimes you just can't attend. And so that's when we communicate, but there's still a quorum as long as we have two. So the meeting can proceed and any vote that would need to be taken could be taken. Um, really the chair is works, um, with me regarding building the agenda and also runs the meeting. So that statement that I wrote in the overview of the agenda, that's the chair's responsibility um, to do on a, on a regular basis. Um, and so really we work um, together in a sense to, for, to help move the committee to the next or trustees to the next, you know, through the agendas and through the next projects and so forth. And it's for one year? It is for, um, typically we do it until someone else, like if Alex was to step down and somebody knew, that's kind of when we might do it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it just kind of follows through. Well, I'm well, not one to fight against current. <laughs> My name has been mentioned several times. so. Um, I, I, I would be willing to serve as chair if, um, if that's what the, uh, the trustees would like to see happen. So I think the, uh, the duties are well within something I can commit to. So Susan, are you okay with that in favor of that? Yes. Okay. So, so a mo motion to mm -hmm. nominate Alex as chair? I second that motion. Yes. <laughs> you can vote for yourself. I think I just did. Uh. All right. Yeah. The 
three member board is a little bit I don't know I the other boards have at least seven people that I staff so there's either seven or nine so this is very so do we move on to building reservations then yeah I see that Petra is here and so maybe um as chair Alex I'm gonna make you the co-host so you can see everything but maybe you would like to go back to the public comment just in case Petra who is the branch librarian of the two branches has um, any comments that she wants to make Petra if you do could you please raise your hand no she's just here to listen okay I just wanted to make sure thank you Petra oh, oh Petra did she did raise her hand. Yep. Hi, Petra. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Hi, everyone. Um, I Yeah, I just heard that this was happening and wanted to jump in in case there's any way that I can help or I don't know. I, I don't know what I missed in the beginning. So um, not much. We're good. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm happy to comment on anything. Um, I guess, is there anything specific you're looking for me to talk about in my experience there because we've definitely had um it's interesting <laughs> being in that space and having um people renting the hall it's they look to us a lot at the library for answers um and we always redirect them um but you know things that are being left in the hall or questions about reservations things like that come up so if there's any way that i can help provide that perspective I'm happy to so um Petra I guess my question would be and I can leave you in the meeting too that's fine okay. um would be and part of this is coming up in the reservations maintenance and updates because I know we've mm -hmm. had a couple of of new things that have occurred with new renters who do different things differently mm -hmm. but is it like what can we or what can this group do to kind of make take some of the weight off of the library um <laughs> there's it's tricky because in in terms of like enforcing um the thing you know so for instance there was that key that was installed outside which i i know was taken down um and just things being left in the hall and that's been a tricky thing with a yoga group for example because they're you know like well our stuff got locked accidentally in a room you know and then suddenly we become responsible for it and i've expressed to renters it's not the best idea to leave your things anyone has access to them and i don't know that you're supposed to be leaving them there um so i guess i don't know what that would look like but just being able to direct and say you know, the, this is the, these are the outline rules. This is kind of how it needs to go, but we can't be responsible for enforcing or responsible for their things. Um, so if you have thoughts on that, I'd love to kind of brainstorm what that could look like. Um, yeah, um, that's, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to give the trustees and um, a little update in regard to what you're talking about. Yeah, so please. <laughs> for those of you, and I always want to call it Andrew's greenhouse, but that might be what it is. But the the um, outdoor yoga, the outdoor mm -hmm. yoga has moved indoor to months, and so this is new for everyone. And I wasn't aware that. And because they have multiple instructors, what they did was they put a lockbox outside with the key in it, and they attached it to the building, in which Jeremiah, the facilities director, removed it this weekend as I got a call at 8.30 on Sat or 7.30 on Saturday morning saying, hey, we can't get into the Munson. So, um, and I don't know why they have my <laughs> cell phone, and that that's fine, but um, so... That's a problem in itself, which if you remember, Susan and Alex goes back to the whole key conversations that we were having prior to, right? Because one of the problems is, you know, one day I somebody rented the Munson and I asked if they needed a key and they were like, no, I have a key from like five years ago. And so that clearly is not okay either. And I know that the town is trying to go more digital. So somewhere we're just gonna keep getting lost in the shuffle. Um, and then the other piece of it that I just found out 
recently too is that this the yoga group is has a cart of their equipment that they keep and it is being moved for multiple different reasons you know i tried to explain that like there's a karate class that's in there right after them or shortly after them and they use that whole space so i'm not sure so petro i would say that you jeremiah and i need to probably have a conversation about how to move forward Mm -hmm. with that group and best instructions because from my recollection of doing this since I think 2017 2018 no one has consistently left things in the Munson for reoccurring classes except for mm -hmm. the people who rent the office spaces downstairs right so um that is it's so this is all very new and so we do need a creative way to kind of work with the and i understand where they're coming from because they have the yeah. multiple instructors right but we also need to keep it would be hard because then the karate class could say well we want to keep our stuff right there. and so we need to have a creative way to find a solution to their key problem and to their uh, storage problem that doesn't include the library. And honestly, Petra, really, like when people rent, I do tell them, like, oh, I for know, the first time <laughs> renters, like, don't park in front of the library. Please yeah. use the church or the parallel place for those who are able to walk, unless you have people who have, uh, who aren't able to, who have ableism issues. I don't want to say problems, yeah. but that need that very first row because we want to leave it open to the patrons, even when the library is not open so that they can just kind of drop a book off and then, and then leave. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we do tell them to clean up after themselves, take their food waste because there's no regular facilities person on site. So mm -hmm. we, there's someone who stops by and I'm not even sure how often he stops by to do the bathrooms and to, and to clean up. Um, and then, you know, I think someone, there's issues with that front door now. And I think at this point, people are taping the front door lock to keep it open, which is problematic mm -hmm. as well. So there's a lot of concerns with the front door. Yeah, I've not seen this level of, well, we, we hadn't been rinsing out for a bit, right? And then it started picking up again. And so there's been a lot more of... Um, just, you know, with the leaving things or putting a sign on the door or kind of taking ownership of the space in a sense, um, which, you know, then we get questions and I remind my okay. staff, that's not our responsibility. I will communicate it or people will park in front. And, and I, it's just a lot of back and forth of like, we know, and we've told them, but I don't know how else to I don't know, prevent that from happening. So everything that you mentioned just hits the nail on the head. That's kind of what we've been seeing and experiencing. Um, and yeah, I just don't want it to become, you know, as it gets, gets more used, any issues between the renters or the library. And like for us, we don't, it doesn't interfere with the programs that we have. But like you said, then everyone might want to start leaving things there. Then, you know, who's keeping an eye on those things. So it just becomes kind of a headache. And there's really no storage space available yeah. for people to leave their things, even if they wanted to at risk. So right. when yeah. the yoga class leaves their cart, it's being left directly in the hall. Like maybe it's in a corner somewhere, but it's still in the hall. Yeah. So those are kind of the immediate things that we're dealing with over there. And I would say the Munson is booked about every every day there's something in the months in thursday friday and saturdays are mostly booked for the entire day already from regular um routine re reoccurring uh classes or programming so it is being utilized people call all the time for all sorts of reasons it is actually a small part-time job <laughs> added to my full-time job so it is being utilized Jennifer, if I might ask a question, um, I know there, there are a number of action and discussion items here um, you know, from ele election of chairs, which we election of chair, which we've handled the building reservations, maintenance, building updates. I know Jeremiah, this is going to be a long question, sorry. I know Jeremiah had 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 some 
updates that he was proposing, you know, as far as lighting and painting, you know, the last time we met, um, I just was hoping maybe to get a little update on those. And then here's my question. Um, after that little, that short update, um, should we be talking about prioritizing, you know, um, these issues, you know, whether they be, you know, access to keys, um, you know, reservation process and, and, and storage of items um, and, and, and figure those out in order of, okay, priority um, based on the very little to no budget we have to address these issues. Um, and, if, and if these issues are, are prioritized, maybe there would be a way to, to, to then um, lobby for funding to, to, to address some of these issues because they'd be your number one priority, number two, and so we can kind of start to chip away at them. Yep. And so what I will say is for none of those items that Jeremiah had proposed prior to, I don't believe have occurred yet. What I will say that's doing and, and the reservation maintenance and updates are really all one could be in theory, one conversation. So the side door that faces the church is being will be handicapped accessible and they're putting a path there so that people can go in through that side door. So that's great. That is the most recent thing that is happening there. Um, the top priorities from my perspective that we have is the front door issue because we can't have people putting tape on it. Some people are having a hard time getting it open. Other people are having a hard time locking it. It's just been a consistent problem. And then also how to handle the key scenario specifically for the yoga class, as well as their, where they're going to keep their items or how they're going to keep their items. And so those that right now, I would say, are my top three priorities. Just because the yoga uses the months in every day, mostly twice a day. Well, the door does seem like a, a top priority from at least two, for at least two reasons. One, of course, is security. And then the other one is the building energy use. You know, if the door is propped open, it's letting out cool air in the hot months and warm air in the cold months. And that's not efficient or what we want at all. Um, I am glad to hear about the accessible entrance, though. That's wonderful. Is it is there any way that it's possible to make the side door temporarily at least the primary door to go in and out of? Is would it be any easier? Hmm. I, I don't know, but I would say for the rental renters, yes. I I won't and Petra, what are your thoughts about for I mean because the library would still use the the uh, main door. Petra, I don't know if you're speaking or not, but you're muted if you are. Okay. So I would say that as for renters, we can make that side door once it's complete, the main door. Is there a timeline for when we think it will be done? I don't know. I can find out. Okay. You know, um, and go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, and Jennifer, at one point, I remember we were talking about maybe um, doing some sort of keyed access, you know, a keypad, a punch pad, or maybe something of that nature to eliminate physical keys. And, and since this renovation of the, or addition of the accessible doors being performed, would this be the best opportunity from a budgetary standpoint mm -hmm. or a maintenance standpoint to maybe explore a keyed access and again, my imagination is taking me to, to a place where a key to access only works during a window of period of time for a group. And so it can't, it wouldn't give someone access after hours and during use of other, other, other folks reservations. That might be a, that might be a, a, a pie in the sky kind of wish, but. Uh, Sounds a little fancy. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I think that the, the key code would kind of have to work. I mean, that one would only be complicated in the sense that if, you know, Alex, if you rented the months in for a programming on one Saturday, you still have that code. 
Yep. It doesn't necessarily. I don't know how many codes they can give one. I will check in with our IT department because that's who would do that, be responsible for that. But um, I'm trying to think of logistically how that would work with so much programming. Yeah. And also for the for the operational standpoint of managing those groups, I know Jennifer, it's like you said, it's it's a more than part time, full time job added on to an already full agenda calendar work, work day for you so you know if you have a recommendation or if you you kind of feel like okay this would work best you know having the experience of several years under your belt of managing this you know i'd love to hear what your thoughts are too so very similar instead so you know the town most of the buildings are now being switched over to like i call it a, a woot woot but it's actually like a key card um and the nice thing about that is IT has a little more control. And so it's a little extra stuff on, on our ends that we would say like, okay, Alex is going to rent from one to five. And then your key code would work from one to five on that Saturday. And that's it. Right. So I guess the question would be collecting the key codes and what would that process be? Would we still do the $25 refundable key deposit? But that to me seems like the simplest way without doing keys again. Yeah. You know, I, I think I, I really like that idea. You know, there's limited access. It gives um, the town and, and you, Jennifer, the ability to cancel access, you know, when someone's no longer using it. I would propose that that fee for renting or for use of that key be at least as much as it would cost for one of the, the replacement of one of those key that one of those cards um and that any associated um uh hourly rate or something like that um um he, he, he also calculated as part of that so it's not just the physical key but it's also the time of it it's also potentially your time jennifer of doing that i, I would so maybe 25 isn't enough. Maybe it needs to be a little more to, to, to maybe really. But I think it, it should should at least cover what the town's costs are associated with the lost key or a lost card in this case. No, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. So I will bring that back to the, I will check in with IT and I will check in with Jeremiah and see how quickly we can get that done if we can get that done at all right in the in the, especially if we're gonna route everyone to the side door yeah. and the new side door is being put on that seems it does seem like perfect timing yeah. i want to thank susan for bringing that up i think that was really you know with, with them renovating that, that uh, online i think there might be an opportunity here yeah um and i just also like to say i don't think i've ever there we have folks in the audience we don't like <laughs> i've done months for quite a while we don't usually have folks in the audience um so the other piece about it is the storage piece and that one is really hard only because it then could in theory become an equity issue of like whoa if they can keep their stuff why can't we and so we just kind of need to figure a a way and i understand where they're coming from because they um the yoga, they have multiple teachers. So having the equipment, you know, they just kind of want to be able to pass it off. So it makes sense, but does it really work as you, does it really work? Well, I think it would be reasonable for, I mean, if there really isn't a storage space and there are groups that use the room that needs the whole room. And I, when I was there last for like a music concert, the yoga cart with all the mats and everything was in the hall, like in the space, um, which, you know, it's fine if it's a concert set up and it's sort of in the back, but if you have people practicing martial arts in there, maybe they need, I don't know. But I think that rule does need to be the same for all the groups and the yoga, they could say, you need to bring your own mat or maybe each teacher carries around one or two extras, but. Um. No, I was just going to say, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> um, I participate in the yoga 
Mm -hmm. um, not so much at the Munson, but always when it's at the greenhouses. And um, I, I think the people that sort of run it would be more than happy to work with the library to figure something out. They're very happy to be there um, and have the space. Excuse me. I'm <clears throat> um, so if the I, I think that they would be um, very happy to, to work with the library to find a, or the Munson to find a solution to that. Um, and, and they do, most people do bring their own mats and stuff, but they do supply blocks and, and um, straps and stuff. So, yeah. But I think they would be more than happy to help come oh. up with this. Yeah, no, we, I spoke with um, Linda, this, over the weekend and so she is you know we both realized that something needs to happen because they went to go on sunday and it was locked in a space where they don't have access to and so then they can't access that equipment anyways so she fully understands that we need to come up with some type of process for that which is okay. totally acceptable and fine we just need to figure out what that might be. And then if we're going to have that be for them, we do have to have it available for if anybody else inquires and says, I need to leave this here for whatever amount of time. That's my only concern. Like one car isn't so bad, we can find a place to probably put it so that it's out of the way. But then uh -huh. if the karate class comes in and says, well, we want to leave our stuff there, we have to be able to have a place for that to go to, which is why I think the overall rule has been not, not to keep stuff there in storage. Um, may I ask a question here? Um, it, it, having been a while since I've been in, down in the back hall, I've been in the library a number of times, but... Um, it, does it make sense to to schedule a, a site visit with Jeremiah for this group? You know, even if it's just a quick you know, half hour, just to kind of look around to see what might be the possibilities. Again, not to vote on anything, but just to get a little bit more familiar with the space here, maybe from Petra and Jeremiah and, and, and Jennifer on, on what might be a creative solution um to this so we can kind of familiarize ourselves so then we can come to the next meeting prepared to maybe vote on this issue yes yes i can reach out to jeremiah and then it's about like coordinating everyone's schedule my initial thought is there's that space when you go into the right if you're going in from the main doors to the right where the stairs to go up to the little balcony area are, and that area is blocked up. I don't know how much room is back there, but that would be my first thought because the little hall, the little hallway spaces that go up to the stage are not really big enough to keep any equipment in um, and still access the stairs to the stage. Yeah. We, we wouldn't want to make any, any serious alterations to the, to the building at all. Um, the other thought is, you know, I know it's a cart, but the meeting room has a, has way more space and is used a lot less frequently than the hall is. Um, so that's the other possibility. And there's a corner down there and they would just have to bring it up and down for their class. Maybe they could leave it up for their morning class and then bring it down after the evening class, depending on the day. But that seems a little more complicated. Um, I, I really do like the idea of having a visit, um, and 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 have a like a, a our own little tour of what's going on. I like that, that idea. And Jenny, I know that you have some restrictions on when you are able to be in person. Is there was there a day? Was it Fridays or Mondays that you might be able to? Um, Mondays, I don't come into work. I, I need to leave for work by eleven. So before eleven on a Monday. And then like every fourth Friday, I get off at one, so I could be back in Amherst by 1.30. Um, the next one of those is February 2nd, I think. Um, but you know, I do work full time in South Hadley, so I can't come up during most, I could come on an evening. Um, uh, and Munson is open, I think, uh, is it Wednesday evening till 7.30, so. Um, well, we have access though. 
Right, right. Well, Except you know, then for, for the library else. part. Yeah. Schedules. Um, oh, Petra. Yeah. Um, or evenings. And so, and when you say evenings, what time is that? 7.30, I guess, mm, or, yeah, or, I mean, I can be earlier. I like to see my kids sometimes. Um, you know, know if, that's like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, when I, I am off work and back in Amherst by 5.30 other evenings. So after 5.30, I guess. Okay. We'll see if we can schedule something. I don't know. Are Monday mornings okay with you, Alex and Susan? Mondays are a good day for me. Like if we did like a nine o'clock, that way you still have plenty of time to 8.30 yeah. or nine. And then you have plenty of time to get yeah. to South Hadley for 11. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And again, I, I don't think this needs to be an extended visit. I think just a quick, could even be 15 minutes, just to re-familiarize ourselves with the facility and think about what the possibilities are. So today is Monday. I mean, for. today is Wednesday, correct? Yes. So yep. if I can get in touch with Jeremiah, then I could in theory schedule. I have to post it by Thursday, the end of the day, by 9 a.m. tomorrow. So if I can get in touch with Jeremiah early enough, then I can schedule it for the upcoming Monday because this really kind of is a pressing issue. Yeah. So hopefully the 22nd. That would work. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. Thank you. So the other thing about reservations too is like, um, and it's, I feel like it's a little bit of a catch 22 because, you know, we charge $25 per hour for nonprofits and $15 an hour for profit. I mean, I said that backwards. $25 for profit, $35 if you're from out of town, $15 if you're nonprofit. Did I say that one correct? Yeah. And so those are incredibly low, which makes it very accessible and very affordable for those who, you know, charge like per donation fees and um, those who are, you know, really just trying to get people together for a one-time event. But in comparison to what other building places uh, charge, where it's very, very inexpensive. And I don't know how this plays into it but um if the jones library is moves to a temporary location during construction those meeting spaces are going to be off the table for a while um, i don't know if that will raise demand at munson but something to consider maybe yeah i don't have a full picture exactly of what the jones's plan is for their library petra are you are you there I am here. My computer's being a little bit, it's testing me, but um, yeah, we don't, we don't really know anything for sure yet if there will be programming space or how that'll look. But I imagine um, at the branches for our staff, we, we would definitely probably see more demand. Um, and then I imagine for the public as well, it'll increase. And then I guess the next question I have is at some point there was talk of months in being used as the library itself as one of the spaces where you have like a satellite library mm -hmm. for Jones. Is that still true? Um, we'll have increased hours in the library portion. We don't, as far as my understanding, the, the hall and the meeting space are not promised to us to use. Um, but that might be more of a sharing question if that changes in the future. But as of right now, my understanding is that it'll continue to be rented out as it is now. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll check in with Sharon about the use of that space. Because I think when the North Amherst Library closed at some point, it was said that Munson would be used. But then we and you guys ended up using the space over at, in North at the Mill District. So that was great. <laughs> Yeah, in terms of like moving our collection there or anything, um, no, that doesn't seem to be the plan. Um, we'll just have extended hours for the branch and then 
yeah, those spaces will continue to be rented as usual, I think, through the town. Okay. That sounds good. Um, so Jennifer, if we might return back to the question on hand, hand am I am I correct in 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 feeling that we we are evaluating whether or not our our fee structure is appropriate? And so, how does our fee structure? I apologize for not being familiar, but how is our fee structure line up against the fee structure for for those those public spaces in the Jones Library? Well, the Jones doesn't charge a fee, and the Bang Center doesn't charge a fee typically to mm -hmm. folks. So we do charge a fee for the months in. Okay. So and I think that is more because there's no facilities on site regularly. Like the Jones has a facilities director in the Jones Library specific to the Jones Library, and they have facility employees. We don't have that at Munson. Do those fees go toward um, improvements that this space light might need? Like it's got quite a laundry list. It sounds like of stuff from the HVAC issues to the door. Um, where where does the funding come from when we need to make? So um, there is, I think it was like thirty five thousand dollars that is set aside that has been set aside from for the HVAC system. But I was also told when I spoke with Ramora, when Maria had inquired about it, was that it would also need to be part of the capital campaign. So that extends the timeline quite a bit. Do we even have an estimate of like, no? Okay. No. No. And it's also, you know, it competes with the other buildings and the repairs that are needed for other buildings too, right? So I think that's another part of the problem is there's competing building needs. Um, yeah. So perhaps you guys want to take some time to think about and at the next meeting that we have via Zoom, I can come up with a, if needed, a list of the other places that rent spaces and how much that is in comparison. But I do like to keep it low because it is nice for the community members and so that it is, you know, accessible by price. Yeah. I mean that after all, I mean that that is part of the mission of of the facility is to service the community. And so we don't want to price out folks that really do need that. So that's that piece. And then building maintenance kind of goes in there with updates. So there's the HVAC system, the side door. And um Jeremiah's long laundry list of lighting and staging changes. That's really about it. Well, I, I do believe that that between this this next site visit, um, when we are able to have it on a Monday, I think we'll we'll kind of move some of these other conversations along as well and maybe we we table you know maintenance for for a moment to deal with the the storage and the accessibility you know again just prioritizing and you know maybe at a future meeting i don't know if it's the next meeting or not we invite jeremiah to, to come with a prioritized list and say okay these are the things um, and also you know be clear on what we do need to vote on and what we don't um as a group and so i'll work with jennifer to do that jennifer i'll i'm happy to meet whenever you need to to be able to do that so i can ask jeremiah to attend the next meeting and if not jeremiah then maybe rob Mora, who is the building commissioner they work you know cohesively together so um which leads me outside of the site visit when do you guys want to meet again 
Well, I, I do know that, that there's the we're required to meet a number of times every year. Um, quarterly, for, right? Quarterly, right? I wouldn't be opposed to to maybe um, moving up the next meeting a little bit, you know, just to deal with this some of these pressing issues. I I would like to propose that maybe that's not something. I don't, Jennifer, are you looking to get something on the calendar today? For the next meeting to get it scheduled um i my preference is that there's enough stuff that even though you're only you're required to meet quarterly that you guys meet next month at some point i you know just because there's a lot of stuff that needs to kind of be worked out yeah and that would... will also give susan enough time to go in and <laughs> get um sworn in all right, so I think we have a proposal to uh, to schedule a meeting for, for February. Um, it sounds good to me. Um, I can it? send out a doodle poll if you guys aren't able to schedule that meeting now. Well, my availability doesn't really change. Um, if we're gonna do a Zoom meeting this early as possible, Wednesday morning time works fairly well because I have the office here to myself. Um, Otherwise, Monday morning, um, I'm sure Friday afternoon is not ideal for anybody, and it's only every fourth one for me anyway. Um, but I can do the months, and um, if we're able to do the walkthrough on the 22nd, I can do that, or the 29th if the 22nd doesn't work. And, and uh, meetings, I'm good with either Monday or Wednesday morning. Either one works. And I plan on going to the town hall, hopefully this week, so. So does the 5th or the 12th of February work for folks at 9 a.m.? Mm -hmm. Either one. Um, actually, I have a problem on the 5th. I have an appointment on the 5th, the morning of the 5th, so that wouldn't work. Uh, but the 12th could work for me. Okay, so let's. Let's put down the 12th and then I'll check in with Jeremiah and Rob and see if they're able to attend and or Dave Zolmack because you know, either three of them will be helpful. So February the 12th at nine. Mm hmm. OK. We're making decisions already as a group. This is fantastic. I, I, I know like, I like it I feel like a productive chair already. I mean, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Petra, before we start to close this meeting out, do you have anything else that you want to include or add? Uh, not at this time. It's been kind of a hectic morning. I'm sure I'll think of more as time passes, but I just want to thank you all for giving this the attention that it needs. Um, we really appreciate your support and I'm feeling good about decisions being made and um, kind of getting this all in order. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you Thanks, for joining us, Petra. Are you available on the 12th at 9 a.m.? I, that's a Monday, right? I usually get in at around 9.30. I'm just working from home today, but um, I will see what I can do. Well, yeah, just pop in if you're able to pop. at 9.30. Okay. And um, I'll just, instead of having you, I'll give, I'll send you a, the link directly. Okay, perfect. Thank you so, so much. That you can just be included. And then, okay. Yes. Do you guys folks have anything else you want to say or state? I guess just that if we, we do this walkthrough, we come up with priorities, and there are things that need to be fix that require funding, like not the entire HVAC system, but um, are we able to do that? I think it's going to depend on the fix. Um, right. What I'm going to say is something has to happen with the door and there is money for building improvements. So okay. that would be a good place to put some of that funding, I would think. Um, and I, I believe the, you know, in the grand scheme of local government, the fees that are received from 
the months and rentals, you know, are a bit, are very small. And I think that they, they, I'm not quite sure if they go into the general budget or if they go into the fund for the trustees. So I should find that out. Um, and then I guess if we are all set, then Alex, I would ask that you, well, one quick more, one more thing is that I think I might add a second public comment to the agenda, just so that after we're done talking, if the people in the audience have something to say, they can say it then based off of the conversations that you guys have. Um, and I do that with most of the boards that I staff as well, although they're a little more, yeah, they're just different. Um, so, Alex, I well, I need someone to make a motion to end the meeting, and then I just need you to put the time on that, Alex, please. Yeah, so the time is 9.52 a.m., and I am making motion to Adjourned. end the meeting. Yeah. I second. Um, perfect. Thank you all so much. Have Thank a good you. day, everyone. Great seeing you all. Great. Bye.